Hello, thank you for joining us today. I'm Martin Lindsay, product manager of our wireless and workflow solutions. Today, I'd like to introduce you to our video production pack. This package includes a PXW Z280 4K 3 chip half inch CMOS sensor camcorder. It also includes accessories for that camcorder, including tripod, wireless audio, batteries, a carrying case, etc. And it also includes a PWS 110RX1A physical receiver that allows you to remote into that and control the cameras, as well as provide an SDI output for those live streams. We're also including in this kit a C trial for 30 days. And with Sony C Media Cloud Services, this allows you to wirelessly transmit files and media from your camera, your Z280, into Sony C, where you can then collaborate and edit with that material and share. So next I'd like to explain where our equipment is located. We're gonna start with the camera that's in located in Los Angeles with uh, Sam. Sam is gonna be operating that camera today and we'll have some uh, interaction with him. We also have the PWS 110RX1A located in Toronto. That is in uh, Toronto, Canada, in actually uh, my basement right now. That receiver can essentially really be anywhere you want. It can be in a rack room somewhere or a uh, IT room. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It just needs to be wherever you need that SDI output to go if you do want to use that for live streams. Otherwise, it's really just used to uh, remote into using a Chrome browser, which of which then you have control of any of the connected cameras to that to that RX1 receiver. I'll explain it as we go through the user interface in a, in a couple minutes here. Then we also have Michael Potts who's joining us as well from California and he is going to be uh, introducing you to the Sony C uh, Media Cloud Services where we will be then pushing files uh, remotely from the PXWZ280 from Sam's camera into the cloud where we can then collaborate and manage the media accordingly. So as I mentioned, the Z280 comes as a complete kit and Sam is now on site in LA where he's gonna do a shoot. He's gonna take the camera out, mount it on the tripod. Obviously insert the battery. Connect his wireless audio to the multi-interface shoe on the top of the camera and that allows dual channel audio. And he's also then going to connect to the network via any method he wants. Now you can connect that camera to a physical RJ45 connection. You can connect it to a Wi-Fi via the built-in 2.4 and 5 gig Wi-Fi connectivity in the camera. And in Sam's case, he's gonna plug in an LTE USB uh, modem. And that's gonna allow him to connect to the cellular networks. So now that Sam has the camera set up, he's simply gonna power the unit on walk away from the camera and set up his wireless audio in terms of connecting his lav mic and putting it on his shirt and turning his wireless audio transmitter on. Once that's done, he can call back to the producer, in this case me, and let the producer know that he's ready to shoot and have the producer verify the shot and do any minor uh, camera adjustments if required. Hello? Hey Sam, how you doing? Great, I got the Z280 all connected and I have the uh, LTE dongle in, so it looks like I'm, I'm wireless and you should be seeing my camera. Awesome, okay, I'm gonna log in and just take a look and, uh, and we'll see if the frame's good and, uh, and if we need to make any adjustments before you do your shoot. Okay, let me take my position then and you tell me if I need to move the camera. Awesome, okay, so basically we were just logged in to, to our receiver, which allows us to have up to 30 cameras connected. Uh, in this case, we have two cameras. Uh, both my camera and Sam's camera in California. Uh, and then we also have the ability to drag and drop to an SDI output. So there's two SDI outputs on, on the receiver. And if we drag and drop Sam's camera into our receiver output number one, it will start streaming. So we're streaming right now through public in, uh, internet, basically over the cellular connection that he's got connected back to my uh, SDI monitor here via the receiver in the basement, my RX1A. Um, and that's all happening in about one and a half seconds from Sam's camera all the way back to my, uh, my monitor here. 
So we have the option to do some adjustments in terms of network range, in terms of uh, adjusting the, uh, the delay if you want to make it higher for more uh, st uh, stability. We also have the option to uh, go into remote control mode here of, uh, of Sam's camera. If we turn the remote control on, I have the option now to, as a producer, look into Sam's camera and basically make some adjustments, including zoom, focus, iris, you know, and gain and shutter and white balance as well. So Sam, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on your camera here. Uh, just because I think it's a bit wide. Let's do a little bit of a zoom, maybe about there. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Your lighting looks good, so I, I think that's good enough to, to go with for a shot right now. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing a, uh, a record start. Um, All right, go and, ahead. And then I'm going to put the phone down and, and then do my line. Okay, perfect. So uh, let's so I'll, right. I'll start the recording and you'll see the tally light go. Hi, I'm Sam Ferris, and we're reporting to you live from Los Angeles, California at the DMPC. Awesome. So I'm going to stop the record now. Uh, and now that file has been uh, complete. And basically what's happened is we've recorded that media uh, or that, uh, that shoot essentially onto two types of media, onto an S by S card, which is recorded the high res. Uh, all the way up to 4K, and we've also got that recorded simultaneously onto an SD card in that camera as a lower res 1920 1080 uh, up to 9 megabit per second uh, uh, record. With that, we have the option to go into the file transfer tab and click on the camera of our choice, in this uh, case, Sam's camera. Uh, but before we do that, we're actually going to stop the stream so we can uh, prioritize the file transfers. When we go into the file transfer tab here, I can click on SAM uh, and I see all the media that's available. So this is uh, listed under the proxy clips, the 9 megabit per second uh, records, MP4s. And then we also have the high res MXF clips here available to us as well. Uh, what a really neat feature is, is the ability to see the clip that he just recorded. Uh, I can do that um, playing back directly from his camera uh, by just clicking the play button here. And this is a little bit slower because it is playing back directly from his camera, but you do have the option to cherry pick the media uh, and play that back before you do a transfer. When you're ready to do a transfer, you just do an upload. So you click the upload button and you would be selected that, you've selected that clip to do an upload to an FTP server that you had already set. In this case, I'm using C. So as you know, we are including a Sony C Media Cloud Services trial. Uh, with this uh, with this video production kit and we're uploading now essentially directly from Sam's camera all the way to our C cloud account the file that Sam just recorded and I'm going to pass it over to Michael who will then show you what he can do in terms of the collaboration and file sharing and then editing of those files once they get into the C system. Michael? Thanks Martin that was really great. Now more than ever teams are working remotely. They don't have access to the same infrastructure and hosted facilities that they once did. Thus, C as a media cloud platform becomes infinitely valuable. Content can go into C and be accessed securely and immediately from anywhere in the world through just a web browser. Cameras can point that content to be uploaded into C into a specific workspace and folder so that the members of the workspace can see and identify that content as well as access it by getting notified when it's available to kick off their workflows. The content then can be downloadable, shareable, and also imported into an editor like Premiere Pro, where it can be pulled down to a local machine or edited in the cloud. There are additional media processing tasks that can be run on content as it goes into C. Examples are transcoding, transcription, or artificial intelligence metadata tagging, such as object recognition. Um, I've got both the low res and the high res files here, so the proxy and the high res. I can download either of those. But one of the great things that we offer the, in the download capability is the ability to not just download through the web browser, but also download with Aspera. So for both upload and download, we have the ability to interact with Aspera Connect as a plug into the web browser, as well as our auto scalable Aspera nodes. And that means that you can control the uh, speeds of the downloads, as well as pause and resume those downloads. So it's a really great feature and one that's very simple and easy to use. So I'm going to click into the high risk file here that we also uploaded and show you our smart clipping features. So this is one of our newer features that we've added. And here I can actually move to identify what it is I want to cut out and select to um, output that as either a transcode to a custom spec output that a customer defines. Or in this example, I also can output it as same as source MXF, which is coming in as XAVC. So I'm going to output as XAVC. And I'm also going to copy through that metadata to the new clip 
that allows for that content to go into the exact folder or uh, workspace that I wanted to. So I can just go ahead and save that clip. Let me put a new name on it and save that clip. That will actually, on the same as source, it will not transcode, but actually rip out the content specifically that I've identified there as a trim from the original source content. So no transcoding going on, uh, which is also a reduced cost. The next thing I'd like to show is that we have a integration with Premiere Pro. So in this panel integration here, you can see that I'm able to navigate to the workspace the same way I did in the web browser, but I can also select content and go ahead and import that directly into Premiere. So I can import that very quickly and that's going to pull right down. And now that's going to import directly instead of all the button clicking you'd have to do on a normal import process. I've actually gone ahead and downloaded also the high res. I've made a sequence from the, the proxy and I've now applied that to the high res. So as a result of that, I have the option of being able to go ahead and upload that content. So I can upload a sequence here and I can do that based on my presets that we have from C or I have my own preset where I'm going to open that up into media encoder and it will automatically begin to encode that content and upload that content right away. The next area we'd like to show is video review. So I have a video review session here. And in that vi video review session, I've made a few comments here. So this is a frame accurate annotation collaboration tool, which is very unique and really special. And I have the ability here to export out content as comment markers, as well as view that as a PDF across the breadth of the different comments that have been made and any replies for anyone I invite into the session. So I've got a branded experience here and I've got an, an outline of the commentary that was made so we can feed that into editorial. Back to the video review session here, I'm gonna now open up what we call a live session. And I've invited some people into the live session or into the work session so that they can join me. I've added Sam and Martin in. Uh, I'm gonna, just gonna call them right now in one second here. Okay, cool. Hey, Sam, Martin, are you guys uh, on the line? Hello. Hey, Michael, how are you? Hey guys. Hey, so I just wanted to open this up and if you guys can join me in the live session, maybe you guys can point out some things that Martin, as a producer, you wanted to kind of make some changes to and make some edits. Okay, cool. Yeah, I can see the footage here. I'm just going to play it back and just do a review quickly. Perfect. Playing it back. That looks cool. I was just wondering if maybe we could remove some of the glare here. Yep. In post. Yep. That'd be great. That's a great idea. Perfect. Hey, can you play that clip back a little bit more, one more time? Yeah, I sure can, I can play that. There you go, beautiful. So, beautiful. so I'm controlling it. So for everyone who's watching this right now, he's actually controlling the playback of this while I'm in my web browser and we're only using a web browser. So, hey guys, thanks so much. I appreciate you guys jumping in there. I'm gonna switch back over. Thanks guys, take care. All right, so um, I've done that. And now what the last thing, last couple of things that I wanna cover here are the, the ability now to get that content wherever you need to, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and share these pieces of content out through a media box. So this is our share functionality. This allows us to put in some notes, put in a title, and you have access controls. Public is what it sounds like. It's a link that can go out and be shared out to other folks and anyone could watch the content. Protected is a simple password. Secure is anyone that I only put into this media box. So if I put in Sam and Martin, um, then only they are the ones who can access this content. I can allow for the, the content to be preview only. I can also allow it to be downloadable as well as the preview proxies, any custom transcoding and any added elements. So I can create that media box now, open that up. And now you'll see you get another branded experience and you have the ability for you to be able to play that content back just like we were in the workspace. That's our media boxes. We also have the ability to do an export to target. So that includes exporting out to Aspera nodes or to Amazon Web Services S3 buckets. And as I click into this content, one more thing to kind of outline here is the ability for during the playback, you'll see that we've got a variety of our proxies, our thumbnails that we generated during the ingest. We also did an edit ready proxy. So that, would, that happened in ingest as well. You can also watch that playback as a discrete file. And that content is now available for download for editorial and for post-production purposes. Great, so that just kind of wraps up a number of the different main features that we offer in C. If you need more information, you can always go to sonymcs.com. Thanks, Michael. And thank you everybody for joining us today. If you'd like to learn more about the video production package and Sony C Media Cloud Services, please visit our website. Thank you and have a great day.